Have you ever tried making a song that's got one of those melodic drops like but also has that heavy and you just can't figure out how to get them to work? Keep on watching and I'll show you how. First, set the BPM to 150. And none of us care about intros anyway, so let's just get straight to the... Using a drum rack, find a chunky but short kick. Look at this guy. Doesn't even last half a bar. And a chunky snare. Put it into a dubstep pattern and sounds like this. I use drum rack for the kick and snare only so that I can sidechain everything using just this one channel. Like I'm gonna do to this crash that I put on top of all the kicks. Real hi-hats on the eighth note. Rides on the offbeat. If you're counting along, that's on the two and four, like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On each of these channels, add a utility and bump up the wideness a little bit. As a treat. And all together. For the best and most tasty melodic drops, you gotta focus on your chords. <laughs> I mean, chords are like whatever. Everyone just uses the same ones and progressions anyway. So let me just drag and drop a bunch of random ones. What? You're not wrong for once. But let me add on to that and say that you can drop a bunch of random chords, but the more effort you spend on having them sound cohesive and good, the better your song overall is gonna be. Chords determine the type of vibe or emotion that you're going for, and everything revolves around them. San Holo himself even says it. So suddenly this melody that's kind of like in between happy and, happy and sad becomes happy because of the chords. I'm going to play some different chords on it, and then you can see the impact of a chord progression on the melody and the entire vibe of the song. Same melody, different chords. Plus, I have an entire video where I break down how to do chords for melodic songs like this, so watch that video after you're done this one. Now make sure, this is important, make sure you remember what key you wrote your progression in because that'll come in handy later. So I started with these chords in F minor. These are the chords I used. And I chopped them up to match the drums. This is what I ended up with. By the way, hi, I'm Ash, welcome back to my channel. Over here at From Bedroom to Banger, I help you become a better producer by sharing the knowledge I know, along with some tips that the professionals use. So, if you like my style, feel free to hit that like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Now you can't have good chords without good sounds, and the most common one is the super saw. But we all know super saws alone are not a drop lead. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? So I used this trick that I stole from AU5, where instead of adding voices with unison and detuning your saw oscillator, you can map Serum's chaos knob to the coarse pitch of your saw oscillator. Don't even think about touching that unison. Make sure to set the chaos knob to sample and hold, go inside the matrix and set the output to about 20. Combine that with randomizing the saw oscillator by editing, right clicking, and hitting randomize all, and adding wideness by duplicating the patch, panning one left, panning one right, grouping it all together, adding a bit of overdrive, and OTT. Wow, the widest, thickest super saws ever. But like I said, this is not a drop. Gosh, Ash, all you say, super saws are not a drop. You're so condescending, dude. Just my opinion. But if it sounds good, then it is good. I mean, your newest song has super saws in it. Super saws of existence for forever of time. Justify this, man. I'm on the verge of tears. I can't believe you do something like that. The drop shouldn't just be super saws, though. Honestly, bro, who cares? Make music. They they all find a platform. It's all viable. Okay, about to show y'all up and let me present to you seven easy steps to get not boring super saws. Chop them up into a really cool rhythm and try to match your chord changes with the kick rhythm. 
combine fast chops with big, long stacks to get a really cool flow. And you heard that? That's auto pan. Automate auto pan to make it wobble like crazy. Move a few of the chords a tiny bit to the right. So you get that delayed. Make sure your side chain is ridiculous to the point that people question your sanity. Thicken them up with a mid bass by copying the bottom notes of your chord stack and adding a mid crunch bass along with a thick sub bass. Notice how these also match the rhythm of the saw stack. Finally, put some kind of lead over top of it. Just anything, really. And make sure it's catchy. For this song, I used a vocal chop lead. I added a ton of distortion and formin through Little Alter Boy to give it a really cool tonality that would make even Elenium jealous. And if you're wondering, hey Ash, where'd you get that acapella? Well, <laughs> a song that's never been used in the history of time. <laughs> that I've never heard at all. <laughs> Keep the drop from sounding empty by adding background elements like this ambience and a spacey synth melody. Gotta have the virtual riot sounds for fills. And altogether, that sounds like this. Okay, that's actually pretty sick. Ready to release. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, releasing music, if you've considered releasing your music independently, pay attention. It's getting released on a label's great, you know? But sometimes you wanna have full control over everything. Being able to create an entire world around your music without any label meddling can allow you to reach your full creative potential and vision. Just like Sudden Death's recently released Void 2, which he did completely independently. And a friend of the channel, AKA today's sponsor, DistroKid, makes doing this incredibly easy. In case you didn't know already, DistroKid allows you to upload your music to online stores, streaming services like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, TikTok, more! <laughs> Whoa! You have full control over the masters you send, the art that you post, and DistroKid gives you marketing tools like the hyperfollow link, which gives you a single link that your fans can both pre-save your release and all the store links are on there. As always, DistroKid never takes a cut of your earnings, and some of their marketing tools are even included with the subscription price. If you're gonna say the yearly subscription of $20 is too much, DistroKid has given me a special discount that you can use. So get 7% off your first year using the VIP link below, you'll be all set. As always, huge thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring. Y'all allow me to keep making these videos, so click that DistroKid upload button and get your next match. Masterpiece out. Ugh, I mean, that's nice and all, but before you hit that upload button, wouldn't it be nice if there was a heavy drop? First, make some space. I like to use about 32 bars around this length. And if you already wrote your second drop, you can always just make space in Ableton by selecting the section, going Control or Command I. Boom! Look at that. <laughs> Got all that space. And as I said, 32 bars is a really good place to start. Lots of impacts. Followed by a riser. And do the risers twice. Stadium kick for some boom. Make a mini buildup with the stadium kicks. Layer that in with the dubstep kick. Make it do the same thing. Add some crowd stomps. This is all about the energy and hype and tension. Almond break. And all together, that sounds like this. Hold up. Now to make this transition even smoother, we're gonna use a bit of music theory. Music what? Remember when I said you had to know the key of your melodic drop? Oh no. Well, basically, you can use the root note of the minor scale as the main note of your heavy drop. 
This is hella easy if you write your melodic drop in a minor key because you just use the root note of that key. And if you don't know what a root note is, it's literally the note that the name of the key is. So since we're in F minor, the root note is gonna be F. So the first thing we can do is use the ambience from the drop, which sits at the root note as an anchor, and it'll play throughout the build. So just copy in that ambience. Oh, that's so easy. So if I made a song in G major, that means I make the heavy part section note a G, right? No, not exactly. When you write your melodic part in a major key, the root note of the heavy part sounds best when it belongs to a minor key. Huh, is that why my happy sounding marshmallow songs sound weird when I try to make it heavy? Yes. And there's nothing wrong with using a major key in this case. In fact, it can add complexity and depth. But to make that work, you have to use a concept called relative keys, which means we want the heavier drop to use a minor key so that everything transitions smoothly and sounds good. And of course, these rules aren't set in stone, but it's a good roadmap to follow if you don't know anything about music theory. The trick is to find the minor version of whatever key you're working in. So in your case, if you have a drop written in G major, you can look up the circle of fifths and see that the relative minor is E minor. So your root note would be E. Just switch the name, call E minor, G minor. Boom, problem solved. Yeah, but that would make too much sense. So you're telling me I gotta memorize two or random keys that just happen to be related? Nah, I wouldn't make you do that. All you gotta do is just Google circle of fifths and it tells you right on it. I've also put the picture in the description below for y'all. Okay, but how is this G, my, uh, G major, E minor? Why are they related? Why does this even work? So confusing, gosh. I'm glad you asked. It's because they both share the same notes in the scale. And since the notes are the same, they can be swapped between each other very smoothly. And you can use this to mix minor chord progressions with major melodies. And if you wanna have sections in your song that go from bright and melodic to dark and heavy, this is how to do it. Wait a second. So if I already write the intro and the melodic drop in a minor key, then all I gotta use is the root note. But if it's a major key, then I find the relative minor and then use that as the root note. Yes, the relative minor only comes into play if you've written your melodic sections in a major key. I got it. <laughs> Thanks, Ash. So after all of that, let's make this transition into heavy work even better. Let's have one long drawn out note. In this case, we're gonna put it on the sub and it's gonna be F. F's in the chat, boys. Same thing with the spacey synth and on a vocal swell. If you've already made the drop bass, you can resample it and filter it in during this section here. Along with a reversed bass one shot. And even though you did all that work to make this transition smooth and seamless, make sure you add a little vocal and a fake out section if you really wanna let the crowd know you're about to switch it up. And now Okay, maybe no vocal. But keep the fake out, and all together, that sounds like... In the drum rack, make a lighter chop snare. And switch the rhythm around a little, so it looks like this sounds like this. Add some fast hats. Copy and paste the symbols from the last drop. But for a little more groove, add a closed hi-hat as a ghost note at the end of each four bar phrase. Bring back all the sweeps and risers and ambience and add a little chant in the offbeat. Use the same sub bass for full dubstep action, keeping it on F. Remember, but match it with the kicks 
and add a few octave jumps. By using mostly the same drum sounds in your heavy drop, it adds consistency to your 65 genre masterpiece. And altogether, that sounds like this. Are you sure about your genres? You keep calling it dubstep, but this is actually a hybrid trap, not dubstep, and definitely leaning kind of more bro step. If it was around 145, not this again, make a few bass sounds or find them on splice, whatever you like to do. And since we spent so much time making the drum steady with the hats and the rides, you can make some wonky rhythms and flows with the sound. Now, this sound was made during a sound design session, and I started with a FM from B and sync type bass, and just threw a bunch of effects on it till it sounded cool. Honestly, I'm not that smart. I'm not AU5. Sometimes you just have to try random stuff till it sounds cool. I mean, this is my processing chain. Now, to keep your bass flow from not being boring, instead of making and piecing together like 12 different bass sounds, just go into your Serum preset and find the knobs that make the biggest changes from your sound and just automate the heck out of them. These are the ones that ended up working for me. And if the changes get super crazy, just turn it into a new synth. That's what happened with this one here. And I also made a chuggy one. This one I did by changing the oscillators. And a very nice toned rhythm one. All together. And from here, you can go wherever you want. Take the song into crazy directions. Finally, after we made at least three different drops, now you can make an intro. Make a quick melody and progression, and throw it together using a vocal you wrote five years ago. Because you have writer's block and are also distracted by other things. So far, I'm over. If you've made it this far, you're a legend. Let's go! If there's any artist you want me to break down, comment it below. So if you support what I'm doing, even just liking the video and subscribing to my channel helps my content reach more people and lets me keep doing this. If you want to support me even further, check out my Patreon. Even just the $2 tier helps me out way more than you think. Plus, you'll find project files for every song you've heard on this channel, along with presets for Serum, Vital, Ableton Racks, and more. And this project file too. And all together with the vocals, it sounds like this. Now go make some bangers. It's over, I'm over Those games that we played with each other It's over, I'm sober, you The rain that would fall in the summer
combine fast chops with big long stacks to get a sick flow. <laughs>